Welcome everyone. I'm Andrew Ray. I'm an assistant professor in the Division of Aquaculture at Kentucky State University. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about uh, solar panels and solar technology. And with me today is uh, Mr. Steve Ricketts. Morning. Steve, thanks so much for being here today. No, thank you. Lovely to come along. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, so you are the owner of Solar Energy Solutions, is that correct? That's right, yeah. I, I run the business with my uh, partner. We've been around about 13 years, and I think we're on our 670th install at the moment. So when it comes to Kentucky, we've probably done just about every type of solar there is. Wow, that's amazing. So you see the solar industry growing in this area, in Kentucky as a whole? Or? It's It's been a, a slow kind of year growth for the last kind of 10 years, but all of a sudden we're really feeling that solar has taken off in Kentucky. The train has left the station and I think we're looking at a very bright future for solar in this area. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. So we've installed some photovoltaic panels here at the high tunnel complex at Kentucky State recently this year. and. Could you tell me how photovoltaic panels work? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 the beautiful things about solar is it's remarkably simple um, and you don't need to know a lot about it you know, to get you know, the benefit and value out of it. You know, fundamentally, what we've got above us, we've got two you know, uh, pole mounted, as we'd call it, arrays, uh, which is basically panels laid on a racking system yeah, anchored into yeah, a very large kind of post buried eight to 10 feet in the ground. The panels themselves are a sandwich effectively, a sandwich of glass uh, and two kind of layers of silicon wafers that when a photon, you know, a light particle from the sun, hits the solar panel, it frees up an electron, which makes electricity. Simple as that in some ways. The electricity that comes out of these panels, unfortunately, is not something you can use immediately in your business or your home. It's direct current or DC electricity. Mm. And the power that's made overhead runs to this box here, which is called an inverter. And this changes the DC current into AC current, which you can then use on a day-to-day on -day kind of basis. See. So in, in some ways, yeah, as simple as that. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. And then what... Uh, what can you do with the electricity? What kind of applications do you see people using in a practical sense, and especially in a farming environment? That's what we focus on here at the Kentucky right. State University land grant program: is reaching out to farmers. Right. How can they? How can they take advantage of technology like this? Yeah, I mean, effectively, anywhere you use electricity from the utility, you can use solar power. The electricity is exactly the same as you would buy on a, on a regular yeah, basis. 95% of these kind of arrays are still connected to the grid. So imagine you're in a farming situation, you're running a grain dryer, you've got a grow out shed you want to power. You, know, you will draw you know, power from say KU or LG&E if you're in this area, and solar would top up your purchase or supplant your purchase on a very kind of bright day. So this is what's called a grid tied system. You're still part of the grid, but yeah, the aim is that your power dominates and supplies most of your needs. What you can't supply yourself, you draw a backup or a top up from your utility. So you've got both options and the utility acts as your battery in some ways. When you haven't got enough, you still get a bit from them. But farmers, you know, typically in the projects we've done recently, are using this, as I said, to power grain drying kind of towers, poultry grow out sheds, hog rearing kind of sheds and just general kind of farm buildings and living quarters. Um, it. It's becoming a really kind of popular thing to do in the agricultural community. Very nice. It sounds like something that could really help farmers and cut down on some of their recurring costs in their farming operations. I, I think, you know, solar in farming applications is probably the most cost effective way of doing solar we've got right now. When we talk to farmers about cost of solar and they're very kind of, you know, smart and cost conscious men and women, Sure. Um, they, when they purchase solar, they get a 30% tax credit, first of all. So that's a great start to get 30% back wow. from the IRS in terms of what you spend. Wow. They can then, as an operating business, get uh, a form of rapid depreciation of their capital costs, which goes on top of the 30%, which makes it even more attractive. And if they're lucky, they can also get a USDA 25% grant on top of that. So a lot of the farmers we're finding who are putting in very large-scale solar 
are seeing a payback of three to four years. Wow. Three to four years on something like this that's going to last 40 years. Wow. That's impressive. You don't get many investments that pay back like that. No, you don't. That's for sure. Wow. So do you see people using this? You mentioned direct uh, to the grid, uh, grid tied systems. Do you see people using batteries to store energy or where are we at with that yeah. technology right now there, and applications? There's still quite a bit of small scale solar that uses DC without having to go through an inverter. So if you're powering a, a well pump or your uh, a cattle watering station, you can get little 12 volt or 24 volt kind of water kind of yeah, motors, water pumps that you know, don't need this. And basically when the sun shines, the pump works. When the sun doesn't shine, the pump doesn't work. And, and they work very well for non-critical applications such as cattle kind of watering. Uh, I've seen some applications where they're using solar to aerate ponds, even in aquaculture systems. Have you seen those systems? You yes, yeah, well, again, that's very aeration? common. If you can sit at the 12 to 24 volt level, you can, you can aerate ponds. Uh, you can do small fan and ventilation kind of systems, uh, limited amount of refrigeration and cooling you can do with direct current kind of systems. But it's fairly kind of small scale because you know, really to get to AC and to get to a higher wattage, you need to come through that DC to AC conversion. Um, you asked about batteries. Right. Batteries are starting to have their day. Historically, batteries would add 50 to 60% to the cost of a solar system which is yeah, significant, and they have a, a, a specific yeah, lifespan. Batteries might last 10 to 12 years. Solar just keeps on going once you've got it. So there was a need to refresh them. With yeah, Elon Musk and everything that's going on on the Tesla area, for the first time in 20 years, we're seeing batteries start to rapidly decrease in price, as solar panels have in the last 10 years. So with you know, both old style flooded cell batteries, new lithium batteries. Month by month, we're seeing the cost down and we're now putting in more and more battery systems, principally to back up homes or back up businesses so that if they get a power out, they've got a reserve there for themselves in those situations. I see. Wow. How common is the uh, pole mounted system versus uh, systems that are mounted to existing structures and what what if i'm a farmer and i've got an old barn let's say should i put solar panels on that or should yeah. i test the structural integrity of that uh, structure before yeah, thinking I, about that I, I, again kind of farmers often have the best buildings for solar because they've got pole barns they've got typically got metal roofs a lot of standing seam roofs and standing seam make the cheapest possible solar installation because you don't need the racking you would have on a house. So you take away 10 to 15% of the cost of the solar system because of no racking. So I'd say most farm systems, you know, we put on that. They've got large expanses of flat, unshaded kind of buildings, ideal for kind of solar, where you can harvest 90 to 95% of the available sun, wow. which is, yeah, fantastic. So yes, barns, yeah, uh, you know, grain kind of sheds, all of those make wonderful yeah, places for solar. And where your average home might have 15 to 20% shading, I say on a farm, you'll be doing yeah, badly if you have more than 5% shading. So high production at the lowest possible cost. Sure, wow, okay. Sounds like there's some really interesting opportunities for farmers to take advantage of this technology. What about other solar systems? I hear, I've heard of solar water heaters where mm. water's pumped through a solar collection system of some Absolutely. sort. What are, what are your thoughts on yeah, those types of applications? Uh, we as a company do solar hot water and did more of it historically. And it's interesting to see the way this transitions. Solar hot water was some of the earliest kind of forms of solar in this country, because it's a very simple, simple process. You're basically signing shots, shining sun on a copper sheet and then running water through that copper sheet and harvesting it. As the price of solar panels has come down and down and down, yeah, it's become frankly cheaper to do solar electric than solar hot water, where you've got pumps to maintain, moving water, and, and maintenance to factor in. Now we say to most people, unless it's at a very large scale, do more kind of yeah PV as we term it, or solar electric, do less water. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I, 
what else am I missing? Where where is solar going in the future? What 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 do you see as uh, we talked about batteries and how that technology is evolving, and how quickly solar really the cost has come down tremendously. The technology has improved so quickly. What 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 more changes do you foresee coming, or is that possible to foresee? No, it, it is. I mean. Solar is a very volatile you know, industry because there's always something new every quarter. The costs, I mean, if I go back seven or eight years and look at a solar panel like we have here, it would have cost me seven or eight hundred dollars. That's now one to two hundred dollars. So wow. that shows what's happened in seven or eight years. The prices keep going down. And people ask me, do we worry about the political scene or the environmental scene or the impact on solar? Has it got a predictable future, which we can all bank in and invest in. Solar's got so cheap, the economics now drive the business. The train has left the station, solar pays for itself, particularly when you think it lasts kind of 40 years. So every year, panels get more efficient, the prices come down, yeah, it's, you know, the electricity costs we're all paying kind of go up. So it's a very predictable yeah, equation in many ways that yeah, it's worth doing from an economic point of view. Sure. Um, are there any big breakthroughs coming around? Batteries is going to be the area where we're going to see the biggest you know, move forward, both in giving people affordable storage and even for larger businesses that you know, have part of their bill based on demand charge, how to shave off those spikes in businesses when they draw a lot of electricity and they get charged for that heavy draw. Batteries smooth those situations. So there's a lot of technology coming along that's going to reduce consumption and reduce the charges that anybody running a business is going to pay. Okay. Wow. Well, that sounds really exciting. Sounds like there's some really great opportunities in solar and solar technology, and farmers can take advantage of this, especially those who have high power draws, I assume, and uh, can really cut some of their costs down. And this has been a really informative opportunity for me, and I really appreciate you being no, here. No, thank you. It's been time. nice to talk about solar. Yeah. Thanks so much, thanks. Steve. Okay, so a special thanks to our guest, Steve Ricketts from Solar Energy Solutions based out of Lexington, Kentucky. This has been a really exciting uh, opportunity to learn more about solar and how it can be used in agriculture applications especially and all the different facets of solar. Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.